Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Exploring AI for IT Scripting. Thanks for joining us. As everyone is still getting settled in, we'll just go over a few housekeeping items. Please think of questions throughout the webinar and direct them to the Q&A section. We'll be answering them throughout and at the end of the webinar. This webinar will be recorded, and we will share the recording with you shortly after it's finished. If we don't get to all of your questions, we'll follow up with you afterward. Reaching out to info at jamf.com will also get you in contact with someone at Jamf quickly. Hi everyone, I'm William Smith, a Partner Program Manager here at Jamf, and today we'll be exploring AI for IT scripting. If you haven't been paying attention, AI has been getting a lot of press lately. It stands for artificial intelligence. Okay, so what exactly is artificial intelligence? Is it science fiction or science fact? Hollywood, the movie industry, and television have had a big hand in shaping our thoughts about AI. Generally, they put a human face or human characteristics on their artificial characters because that's how we, the human audience, can relate to them. We understand characters better when we can anthropomorphize them. Anthropomorphize just means attributing human characteristics or behaviors to things that aren't human, like our cars, our computers, and especially robots. Recognizing that we tend to anthropomorphize things doesn't help that even the apps we use today are programmed to try giving off human vibes. For example, Siri on our computers and devices refers to itself as I, as if it were alive and aware of itself. But is Siri really alive? I like to think so. Maybe that's how Hollywood defines artificial intelligence, but in the computer and technology worlds, it's not nearly as exciting. If I search for the definition of AI, I'll get several different results like the simulation of human intelligence processes by machines, or a computer science using robust data sets to problem solve. I think I like this one the best, the ability to deal with new or trying situations. None of the credible definitions of AI will say anything about self-awareness or being alive like we see in the movies. Instead, AI is about programming computers to problem-solve like humans. Today, we have robots that can walk like humans, computers that can speak and recognize speech, and scanners that can detect facial features. To say we're teaching computers how to think isn't really a stretch. Right now, we're seeing a proliferation of online tools thanks to OpenAI. What's OpenAI? To answer that, let's ask one of the new online tools backed by OpenAI called ChatGPT. The GPT in ChatGPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Now, that's a mouthful of gibberish. Just think of it as a chatbot. I told ChatGPT to give me a few sentences about OpenAI, and here's how it responded. OpenAI is a research lab exploring artificial intelligence, and it wants to ensure AI is developed so that it's safe and beneficial for humanity. It's exploring AI for language processing, machine learning, and robotics, and they make tools that software developers can incorporate into their own products. What's interesting about this response is that the first sentence is largely picked up from Wikipedia, but it's still not verbatim what I'll find on Wikipedia. I can find snippets of the second sentence on multiple websites, but again, I don't find the entire sentence. ChatGPT is doing a really good job of taking information from multiple online sources and synthesizing or rephrasing it to make something unique. That's pretty cool. So if it can take a request and write a few thoughtful sentences, what else could it do? That's why we're here today. Someone asked me if we could use OpenAI for scripting. 
Before I dive in, we'd like you to know about Jamf's mission to help organizations succeed with Apple using our management, identity, and security solutions for enterprise, education, healthcare, and other organizations. Jamf has set the standard for managing Apple products in the enterprise and continues to build a diverse set of products for its customers' diverse needs. With more than 70,000 customers, more than 30 million devices, and more than 140,000 community members, Jamf is here to help you and your organization succeed. Now, let's dive in. I'll try to answer a few questions such as whether AI might be useful for shell scripting and if there's a special way to interact with it. And I'll test how deep we can go with AI to see where it works and where it doesn't. Let's get started. Can AI help administrators write useful shell scripts? I've spent the past 30 years writing scripts, and still today, I'll search online for a quick snippet that I can use or a better way of doing something. Sometimes, I just know there's one command that might be able to re replace what I'm doing with two. Can AI help someone like me? Here's an interesting website that's been around since February of this year, and it's powered by the OpenAI project. It's not part of OpenAI, but rather, someone has created this website and linked to OpenAI's API. How do I know it's powered by OpenAPI? I use Safari's Web Inspector to look at the site's source code. And they've done a little customization to tweak the responses. Let's look closer at that text at the top. I'm Sudo Support AI, and I'm here to help you with Mac OS Bash Scripts. It's specific to scripts on Mac. Doesn't get much better than that. At the bottom of the page is where I can enter a question or give some instructions. Remember, computer AI is supposed to simulate or mimic human behavior, which means we can take advantage of its generative pre-trained transformer or chatbot capabilities Simply put, we should be able to ask a question as if we're speaking to a human being. There's a sample question already in the field by default. How to find all large files over one gigabyte. Let's see if it works. All I have to do is press enter. Almost immediately it comes back with a result and it looks pretty good. It uses the find command to start its search at the root of my drive. That's what the slash represents, and the plus sign tells it to return only files larger than what I've specified. That's short and efficient. But does it work? I'll copy the answer and paste it into Terminal. What I'm seeing here is normal. A lot of the output coming from the find command is notifications telling me it can't read certain directories of files because my current standard macOS account doesn't have enough permissions to do that. It's kind of mixing the notifications with the actual list of found files. This is just fine for scripts because we'll probably take the output, the list of found files, and use it somewhere else. Maybe we'll sort the list and look for the top 10 biggest files. Those notifications only appear here in Terminal. If all I'm doing is running this one command, I'd add something like this, where at the end, I tell Terminal to take all those notifications, that's what the number two represents, and redirect them to dev null, which means just throw them away. What's important is pseudo solver AI was spot on with its response if I were using its command in a script. Now, let's keep playing. What else can we do here? I said earlier that we should be able to ask questions as if we were speaking to another human being. So what if I speak French instead of English? Will that work? Why don't we ask? Interesting. It seems I can ask in French, but the response will still be in English. For the most part, shell scripts can take non-English data and return non-English data, but shell commands themselves are written using English words. This response kind of makes sense. Next, 
I took the original question about finding files over a gig and used Google Translate to come up with what I'm pasting here. And I had my manager, who just happens to live in Paris and speaks French, verify the translation for me. Let's see what we get back. So, this is odd. It said it would respond in English, but it responded in French anyway. I don't know if it's OpenAI that said it would respond in English, or if the owner of this website programmed that response. Something doesn't align somewhere. But more importantly, is the answer correct? Here's the English translation from Google. It's a few sentences all run together, but they still make sense. The find command is the same as the one we got earlier. And it goes even further this time by giving simple explanations for part of the command, as well as some human-sounding exclamations like, of course, and I hope this will help you. Again, the OpenAI developers are anthropomorphizing the response. Now let's try some random things to give Pseudosolver a challenge. I'm going to paste in some messages and try to get a little more complex each time. I really want to see what it knows about macOS. First, here's a challenge that can't be done with a single command. I've pasted a request to know how to read a file on my desktop, sort the lines alphabetically, remove any line with the word for, and then write the remaining lines back to a file in my home folder. What happens? That looks good to me. I love that it's using the sed command very efficiently. It's doing two things at once. First, it's taking advantage of the fact that sed can read files. Many scripters make the mistake of using another command like cat to read a file and then direct that into something like sed or grep to manipulate text like deleting lines containing the word for. As we see from pseudo-solver's response, Sed can do it all by itself. And it also knows the default order of the sort command is alphabetical. Again, a very efficient use of commands. Let's try another one. This time, I've pasted a new command where I want to test whether it knows how to read a plist file and pull back the value of a specific key. I was expecting it to use the defaults command, but instead it came back using plistbuddy, which is just fine. And here's something interesting I saw during my test while putting together this webinar. The plistbuddy command requires that I specify the full path to it, slash usr, slash libexec, slash plistbuddy at the beginning. In my earlier test, pseudosolver only returned plistbuddy without the path, which is wrong. That won't work. I then pasted the correct answer back into the message box, and Pseudosolver explained what the command does and how it works. But more importantly, between my testing and now, either the owner of this site has corrected the problem, or, what I like to hope, OpenAI has learned from its mistake and now knows to use the full path to plistbuddy. I did a lot more testing than what I'm showing you, and I think the results were pretty spot on. My testing also showed it could write some simple scripts given some very specific instructions. I'll talk about that as I pose my next question. Can AI understand what I ask, or do I need to speak AI? So far, it's done a great job understanding my human language, but how far does that go? Now I'm going to get a little tricky. For example, can Pseudosolver help Jamf Pro customers? I'll ask if it knows anything about Jamf Pro. So this is interesting. I expected it might return something about the Jamf binary command line tool that Jamf Pro installs on all managed computers, but instead, OpenAI responded with general information about Jamf Pro. In other words, it gave me a response, but it didn't anticipate what I was asking. 
I need to refine my question just a little bit. Does it know anything about the Jamf binary? And again, OpenAI returns information about what the Jamf binary can do. It knows Jamf Pro is a remote management system and that the Jamf binary is part of the management framework. It knows about policies and gathering inventory, but it still isn't doing a good job of reading my mind. It's very much like the first result of a Google search. So I'll be specific and ask how to use the Jamf binary to update a computer's inventory. There's only one correct answer to this. This time, PseudoSolver is having to think about the response a bit. It could be that OpenAI is struggling to find an answer. Why would that be? Remember, the Jamf binary is installed by Jamf Pro when it enrolls a computer. It doesn't come with Mac OS. Other than small pieces found in support forums and blog posts, the Jamf binary itself is the only place where its options are documented. In Terminal, we have to run Jamf help all to learn all of its capabilities. Even more, we have to run Jamf help verb to learn how to use a specific option. Jamf hasn't included anything in its online documentation about how to use the Jamf binary. Generally, customers learn about it during their Jamf Pro onboarding. So OpenAI doesn't have anything public it can reference to help you. By the way, PseudoSolver never responded to my question. There's really no way it could without documentation about the Jamf binary posted online somewhere. So you can still use your human language with AI, but keep in mind its knowledge of very specific products may be limited, and its responses very broad. But for tools that are publicly documented, it's more likely to give you the results you're after. As we ask, where does AI work and where does it fall down, we find we'll need to learn a few more things about using AI today. First, you'll need to determine if any response is correct. I've pasted a challenge where I told PseudoSolver to give me a script that'll show a dialog asking for my name and then show me another dialog telling me hello. The fact that I said write a script isn't important. I just happen to know that something like this is going to require at least two commands. How did PseudoSolver respond? Well, it's a good try, but it's not right for a few reasons. First, what we're seeing is two commands, as I expected, but they're running together on the same line. They need to be on two lines like this, or they can be on the same line, but I would need to separate them with a semicolon. If I were to put this response in a script or try to run it in terminal, it wouldn't work. This is just a formatting problem, either with OpenAI or the PseudoSolver website. One or the other needs to respect line breaks. The second reason it's not right is the read command on the first line only works with bash. If I were to try using it in Z shell, which has been the Mac OS default for the last four years, it would fail. I could make it work if I changed the syntax to work with ZShell, but in all fairness, the site does say bash script, so I'm going to let this one slide. The next reason this is wrong is that the first line won't display a dialog at all. The read command is an interactive terminal command only. If I tried to run this using a Jampro policy, I'd never see the prompt asking for my name. And the last reason is subtle, but it's very important. While I applaud the answer, it doesn't just say hello, but rather, hello, Bill, or my name. The exclamation point at the end is going to be seen as part of the name variable. In other words, the first line defines a variable called name, 
But the second line is looking for a variable called name exclamation point. To make the second line work, I'd need to put curly braces around name. It's almost as if OpenAI were looking on the Stack Overflow website and finding a relevant discussion, but choosing the question instead of the right answer. Next, you should expect that AI may give you multiple answers to the same question. I'm pasting in that request again where I told it to write a script to display a dialog asking for my name and then to display another dialog telling me hello. This is the response I just now talked about. Now, here's me asking the exact same question a second time. This time, PseudoSolver is taking a while longer, and for a while I was thinking it may have gotten stuck again, but I was wrong. Now I have several lines of stuff. After putting in line breaks, here's what it says. I like this. It has comments. Those are the lines that start with the hashtags. Comments don't affect how the script behaves, but they're there for us to read. They usually tell us what happens in the script. This command to display a dialog asking for the user's name is interesting, but a little problematic in a few ways. It needlessly calls system events, which scripters commonly do when using OsaScript to display a dialog. It's usually done when an administrator is trying to pop up a dialog unexpectedly to the end user, which is a bad practice. This also requires a Privacy Preferences Policy Control Profile, or PPPC, to work, which is just extra overhead we don't need. The syntax is also wrong. Notice on the bottom line, it specifies a default answer, but doesn't provide a default answer. And see if you can guess what else is happening there at the very end. You might remember earlier when I was talking about sending unwanted notifications from Terminal to Dev Null to just throw them away? I don't know why, but this line is asking you for your name and then sending your response to Dev Null. It's just throwing your answer away. Really bizarre. Let's keep going. Now the script seems to be trying to take the response from the first line, which it threw away and putting it into a variable called name. Again, right idea, but not the right way to do it. It even includes an intel statement to close the tell application system events command on the first line, as well as redirecting notifications and errors to dev null. But that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. This third command seems to complete the first two, if the first two were actually doing anything. It needlessly calls system events, which again would require a PPPC profile to work. It leaves out the quotes that we need around much of the command. And it makes another subtle but common mistake on the last line. Note that it's putting single quotes around the dollar sign name variable. That won't work. Single quotes prevent the command from expanding the variable. If this worked, it would literally display hello dollar sign name exclamation point. But that won't even work because of something even more subtle. It begins the hello name phrase with double quotes but ends it with a single quote. Quotes in scripts have to be balanced. And then, I guess, for good measure, it throws everything away into dev null. I don't know why. And finally, there's a last comment at the end that explains what the script does. I love scripts that use comments to explain what's happening, but conventional practice is to put something like this at the beginning of the script, not the end. It should tell the reader what it will do, not what it should have done. These last couple of responses from PseudoSolver remind me of Yoda telling a dad joke. Why was 6 afraid of 7? Because 9, 7, 8. 
If you know the original joke, then you're like the administrator who already knows how to script. You understand how the joke should end. Even better, you understand why this joke's funnier than the original. That's how I'm looking at some of these answers from AI. They're funnier than a correct answer. Let's ask AI the same question one more time, shall we? Oh, artificial intelligence, write me a script that will display a dialogue asking me for my name and then display another dialogue telling me hello. This one's very similar to the first response, except it left out the OK button this time. With or without the OK button, it still won't work. And finally, I've been picking on PseudoSolver and its ability to understand how to put together shell scripts and Apple scripts, which isn't always easy to do, but I do want to give it a chance to shine. Here's one of the last tests I did for this webinar, and I was really pleased with the result. I pasted in list all Jamf Pro computers. And here's what I received. Let's clean that up a bit. It did several things right. It understood that to use Bash to get a list of all Jamf Pro computers, it would need to access the Jamf Pro API. That's great. The command not only returns the correct data, it adds an XML lint command to clean it up and make it readable. It gave the scripter instructions for three variables to fill in, the username, password, and Jamf Pro URL. And it even went so far as to suggest using the greater than symbol or right angle bracket at the end to redirect the results into a file named computers.xml. I only gave PseudoSolver six words and it returned a working answer. I think that's pretty amazing. My takeaway from these tests is to take what you receive as answers to your questions with a grain of salt. So what are my final thoughts about using AI for scripting? Here's what I like. We know AI isn't alive and isn't really intelligent. It's just a different way of solving a problem that's definitely beyond a Google search. But I appreciate the choice to anthropomorphize AI because it means we don't have to learn how to use it. It adapts itself to us. Before I entered my questions or challenges, I had an idea of what the responses should look like. I was very happy to see responses including just a single command were very concise. I would say AI returned classic textbook examples for many of the commands. Good for someone like me who probably knows too many ways to do the same thing and needs to relearn the fundamentals. I love the fact that I can ask a question and receive a response in my own language. That makes this technology inclusive and accessible to anyone, not just for scripting, but for writing. I discovered AI can work in different dimensions. I can give it a problem and it'll give me an answer, or I can give it an answer for it to explain to me how it works. And the PseudoSolver AI site has been tweaked to focus on Mac OS commands, so it's a boon for all Mac admins of any scripting expertise. Here's what I don't like. Much like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, AI seems to know the answer is 42, but it's up to us to know the right question. It seems to do better when we can give it a very short and precise set of instructions, which isn't always easy to do. The answers we receive aren't always right. In fact, they're often wrong. We're likely to get a wrong answer the more complex our question or challenge. It's similar to searching for Google. We sometimes have to reword and simplify our questions to get a better response. It seems OpenAI has a vast database of information at its disposal, but sometimes it can't see the trees for the forest. It'll pick an answer, but it has no way of knowing it's the right answer. I don't like that I can ask the same question and get multiple responses. Scripting won't always have exact answers, but I'd love it if AI could stick to an answer 
when it knows it has something right, instead of being random about what it chooses to return. And I wish AI would learn to admit that it doesn't know an answer instead of just returning something. It seems to be following the classic approach of throw the spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks to learning. But if I think about it, isn't that how small children learn? And AI is just now coming out of its infancy. Those are some of my findings while exploring using AI for scripting.